leaders na madara sa satuya through peaceful manner. Kaya, trust the process, participate in the election, and go out and vote sa maabot na lunes. Ano? Sige po. Ang madadangog man tabi ni do sa mga masunod na minuto, sundo na alas 5 na ini, ang uh, recorded interview man po kay Senador Dick Gordon. Ako po, si Pio Fernandez. <laughs> by drug pushers. Uh, another law that I found that was made into law was the uh, uh, Lisa Otaveras co-authored it, uh, but I sponsored it, is the uh, law involving uh, uh, solo parents, uh, also the SSS. You lose your job for the first time, uh, the government will give you three months pay until you find a job. Mababa yun, pero mahirap lang tayo. So, marami tayo ang ginagawa ng mga batas na ginagawa natin. At uh, eh, siguro kung titignan naman ninyo, tayo lang ang lumabang sa presidente doon sa katiwalian ng farmali. Uh, kung pinafollow niya yung farmali. No? Uh, my Blue Ribbon Committee is the first Blue Ribbon Committee in history that's able to lock up a very high officials of the Department of Immigration who took bribe money and I was able to get the evidence, and now they are in jail. They have been declared uh, convicted, uh, and they were made life imprisonment. Tatlo sila doon. Deputy Immigration Commissioners, nakagulong. So, I think my record speaks for itself. There are a lot of other investigations that I conducted, including the fertilizer fund, marami yan. Drugs, nakagulong ko pa si file doon. Uh, and then, nilipat siya sa customs, nilagay siya doon sa penitentiary, and then nagbulo na naman siya doon. He, uh, he was uh, uh, letting people uh, out of jail, uh, you know, obviating the uh, decisions of the courts. On his say so, siya lang ang gumagawa uh, nung tinatawag na papalabasin yung preso. So, nagtanggal siya, mabuti. Isang ginawa ni Duterte, tinanggal siya doon. So, marami tayong ginawa ko niya. Uh, I've been uh, the youngest delegate to the Constitutional Convention of 1971 while still a student. And if people can vote here at 18 year old, uh, when they reach 18 year old, I'm part of the reason for that. Uh, if you look at uh, our Bill of Rights, the Walayong Bill of Duties, I filed the Bill of Duties and Obligations para hindi kabig, may tulak. At uh, yung Bill of Judice, silang talaban ng pinalitan yung Constitution natin. I've been a mayor of Olongopo, and since that time, I've been coming here to Albay. Whenever my own volcano erupts, Dick Gordon is always here. I think you all know that. Uh, also, so that must have been about six or seven times. Uh, as mayor, we became the model city of the entire country. A lot of people came over, international and local. I believe Sri Lanka followed my color coding scheme for transportation. And then I also was, uh, uh, you know, I always talk cars with President. President Estrada took me out, administrative order number one. Uh, and uh, of course, he was taken out for corruption. And uh, I got back in office as a, as a chairman of Subic Bay, uh, and, as mayor of Ulongopo, and uh, Kiriba kami ng pinatubo, tinayo namin yung bayan, tapos pinalis ang base, kami ang nagtayo ng base. Hindi gobyerno ninyo ang gumawa ng subing. Si Senator Gordon, acting as mayor, made the bill, and uh, pinasinabit namin, yun ang ginawa nila, yung uh, pre-port bill. Naginaya rin sa Clarkfield na tinulog natin, at saka ng Marivela Freeport, at saka Camp John Hay, and Port Point. So to make a long story short, our record speaks for itself. 
We were Secretary of Tourism, pinalakasate ng turismo nito, sa Sorsogon, Watch Our Whales. Watch. Wow. And then uh, World, World of Waters, yung Mount uh, Mayon, Perfect Home. And then, uh, you know, uh, yung uh, Karawao, kar kar uh, sa Bicol, sa Kaweri Resort, tayo ang nagpasikat dyan. Inimbit ako dito yung Survivor Series, and they were able to come in and create a series in Karawao. I have been to Siruma, I have been to Catanduanes, I have been uh, to places like Tinago for disasters as Red Cross Chairman. I have been all over the place. We have built how many homes here, uh, Athena? 15,997 homes in the Bicol region. Today we are here not to campaign alone, but to make sure that uh, Paco, I don't want to campaign anymore. Tamana, we cannot do anything anymore. Uh, two days before the election, so before the end of uh, uh, the campaign, I thought I deserve this day because we're going to open 167 homes built by the Red Cross with the help of the International Federation, the British government, the Canadian government, the Korean government, and the Singaporean government. Uh, the Red Cross has done 151,000 homes throughout the entire archipelago in the 15 years that I've been chairman of uh, Red Cross. And we've become the number one supplier of blood, now we're in dialysis. We even bought a ship that brought equipment to Catanduanes uh, during Typhoon Rolly. So we have this Rolly here in Bicol. And uh, hopefully, if you pray hard enough, and I think it's possible, the Red Cross will finally have its own uh, tertiary hospital in Marikina or in Laguna or maybe in Cebu. That is the plan. Uh, uh, in fact, to pursue that plan, we are sponsoring, was it 28 or 17? Medical doctors of TJH so that when they graduate, they can immediately help us in the hospital. What is it? We have a provision for... Iran, Iran, Iran. Actual 17. 17. All right, so yeah. So, may share mga kailangan mo lahat. So, I guess that's it. Uh, uh, Natatawa lang ako, sabi mo, 31. Hindi ba kayo marunong bumasa? Pwede naman yung matandaan yung Gordon, na bigyan lang flat Gordon. Okay po, um, doon sa mga kasama natin sa media, may microphone po dyan. Paki, magpakilala na lamang po at sabihin kung anong media outlet. And open na po si Mr. Senator para sa inyong pagkatanong. Uh, afternoon, Senator. So, Senator, uh, the Bicol region, yes, and uh, has always been in the Typhoon Alley. So, what uh, is the plan of the Filipino Red Cross in this province? Uh, before that, uh, let me introduce first Remy Mindones, pala, Senator. Your name is? Remy Mindones. Remy? Yes. All right, Remy. Uh, the Red Cross has been here, and this is, well, I have created 143. That means you have 44 in every barangay. The 44 will be our first alert system, and they are trained to look for blood, they are trained to uh, first responders. Uh, sila kagat, tatawag sila sa national headquarters. In fact, I launched the uh, first texting machine here in the Gaspi many years ago. That's why 143 is very active here. And then we started doing a uh, joint work. In fact, I'm doing one in Catanduanes with livelihood and uh, first aid training and disaster prepare, preparation. And we've been doing that all over uh, Bicol, not only here, but all over the country. So the Red Cross has four piece. Predict, that's my name, Dick Gordon, predict. Predict. Predict what's gonna happen here. The time of predict. We Filipinos are just right here and now. Uh, kaya instant gratification ang policy ng lahat ng politiko. Bigay mo na lang yung gusto, walang plano-plano. Abutan mo na lang na abutan, ayuda na lang na ayuda. Kalimutan mo na ang kinabukasan, hindi mo na tuturuan yung tao, magana buhay na sarili niya, kaya tayo na pag-iwanan. We predict, we plan, we prepare, and we practice. I even gave whistles here. Para pag may bagyo, pipito ng malakas para makakapag-prepare for evacuation. We've done very well with that. Uh, and uh, I'm proud to say that the Red Cross is one of the better or best Red Cross societies in the world, even if we don't have enough resources, we manage. All right, thank you so much, Senator. Thank you, Remy. Good question. 
Senator? You know, I'll, I'll be happy if you take your mask off. Yeah. Senator, good afternoon. No, no. Si Ange Galero po ako ng TCGBAM. Oh, ah, yeah. Your, your program, the resettlement site in Bulasan, is a very commendable program. Pero ano po yung naging pagka, konsepto nitong programa na to? And ano po yung plano ng Philippine Red Cross in order for you to sustain uh, yung kagandahan ng mga bahay sa Bulasan re relocation site? Well, hindi naman nyo ako hininga ng bahay. Hindi naman nyo hininga ng Red Cross ng bahay. In fact, in fact, uh, we made an appeal to the international community, and like I said, IFRC represents a great chunk of that. Uh, the Korean Red Cross, uh, the British Red Cross, the Canadian Red Cross, Singapore Red Cross, lot agambagambag kami yung pati Philippine Red Cross. Ito yung mga kinumana ng rubara ng sang lahar. We were here, I was here. And it was a request that recovered the body of one of the young people. Do not want to say that we can bring back the houses and the houses of the houses. Alright? So, the problem is that we need to be properly subdivided and Governor Bichara did a good work, did good work in supporting us. We have a good governor here and the local governments also helped out. So we were able to subdivide, prepare the land development, and we're not too big. So I asked the Canadian Red Cross to provide you know that we're not in water gatherers, that we're not rain harvester. Rain harvester. I did that in late in summer. We're on service in the water district. So from the gutter, when it rains, it goes to a harvester, and that's what they use. Each house has a toilet. Each house has a, uh, a GI sheet that is thick that will not fly away because we make sure that it's properly designed. And if it does fly away, it will not cut the neck or give people a Filipino haircut. They take the head out. Uh, anyway, uh, we're pretty sure about that. And maybe dapat siguro yung tulungan na lang natin sila later on. I don't believe in pampering people. I believe that they should really uh, help themselves. God helps those who help themselves, diba? Masarap tumungan yung tumutulong sa sarili. So, para ma-maintain yan, mapapasok pa sila namin yan. In fact, galing ako sa Cebu, when we put up 4,000 houses in one town, daan ba tayo? And they don't even pay for their power bills. Galit na galit ako. Because hindi nila pinipinturahan yung bahay. Alam nyo kung ba't di sila nagbabayad ng power bills? Because I got the French Red Cross to get a donor to give them solar homes. So they don't pay for power bills. One of my better projects. So after this election, I told them, you better pay it because I'm going to come back here and pay with you. Because pangit naman yan if they come back and they see that the house looks ramshackle, gagawin nila yan. So gano'n rin ang gusto ko dito. Gano'n naman, mas magaling kayo sa Bicol. Thank you so much. Salamat. Thank you. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senator. Hello, Spire. Hi, na hapon, Senator. Marie, na hapon po, Sir Nancy Medjavillo, Radio Pilipinas. You know, we have partnership with PNRC and the National. We have a regular program of the Philippine National Red Cross, uh, Senator. Sir, my concern... No national. Yeah, we have. Philippine Red Cross Lab. Philippine Radio Pilipinas. Ah, Radio Pilipinas. Yes, po, sir. Okay. Sir, um, I have been covering PNRC. Uh, Walang the, N, PRC lang. PRC, sorry. Uh, PRC. Oh, I be a very accurate yeah. journalist. <laughs> yes, sir, that's true. Now, um, ang tanong po natin is, how would you describe the community or Philippines without Philippine Red Cross? It will survive, but it will have a hard time. Volunteers are the lifeblood of a country, and the Red Cross provides a golden opportunity for people uh, to have an organization that they can join on their own free will. We're not paid. I am not paid. My counterpart in other countries are well paid. Very well paid. I have two jobs. Uh, being a senator, being a secretary of tourism, I was chairman already. But I always enjoyed being in the Red Cross because it's pure. All right? So if your question is what will be the Philippines be, ask me again. What will happen if you kick the bases out of Subic Bay? 
What will happen if you kick the bases out of Clark Field? I will refresh your memory. You look young enough to do that. Diba? Clark Field was stolen, blind. It was decimated. Everybody had a field day taking out the toilet bowls, wrecking the walls, taking out the corriente. Diba ba totoo yun? Kaya sabi ko, hindi mangyayari yan. And then they said, oh, papali sila din ang base, sabi nila. Well, look at your Air Force. It's all air, no force. Look at your Navy. Tinatapakan tayo ng China. Ang sabihin ng presidente ninyo, hindi natin kaya yan. I don't believe in that kind of talk. That's a weekly conversation. But let me just tell you, the Philippines will go along its merry way because tayo, we're a happy people. But you need strong leadership that is firm and fair. Not one that threatens, not one that runs after the opposition because they don't want to hear what they're saying. You want a government that will uplift the people because that is the objective of Red Cross, to alleviate human suffering and uplift human dignity. You do not uplift human dignity if we keep on giving ayuda, bigay ng bigay, may four-piece ka na, meron ka bang libre kung ano nang binibigay ng gobyerno. And so what happens? You have a people that's totally dependent. The Koreans we helped in the Korean War, they were poorer than us in the 50s. And when we help them, now their education system is best. Their uh, economy is booming. They're always at the source point of uh, economic development. They're doing computer uh, information technology work. Their environmental uh, thrust, climate change, they address. And they have a navy, they have an air force, and uh, we try to buy planes from them, small planes. So if you let me finish, Singapore is a small city state that is as big as two big Bay Metropolitan Authority, including the four municipalities. You can perhaps put maybe 17 Singapores in Albay. And yet, small Singapore beats our country. Its per capita income is $59,500. Our per capita income is $32,500, uh, 3,200 pesos. What does that tell you? We have been voting for the wrong people since 1945. Because in 1945, we had the highest literacy rate in Asia. We were second only to Japan. And we were respected by the whole world. We even sent our saber jets to the Congo for peacekeeping missions. There we can't even defend ourselves. Our reading in our schools, uh, we are Kolelat, last in PICE, which is the uh, Evaluating uh, International Organization for Education. We are number five from the last in mathematics. And it's gonna get worse because for the last two years, we insisted on no face-to-face -face classes. So the children would have lost their social skills and you are relying that the teachers are able to give them the assignments and you're hoping that the students made their assignment and not their mother or their father. So we are in a very, very deep hole and this election is crucial. It's too late to say that now. You're going to vote for people, you better vote right, because if there's anything that we have to learn, since 1945, we have been going down like an elevator very swiftly and surely, and we find our future in foreign shores. We don't find it here. Sir, aside from the humanitarian mission and programs of the Red Cross, in politics, okay, how would you what, what is your basis of advice to our voters? To or, our? To our voters. Voters. Vote right. And what are the criteria? Not vote on your, okay. on your senses. Mm -hmm. You like the guy, he looks good, good to me. He's an artista. You know, you vote for him. <laughs> if you're voting for the Senate, he better be bright. Mm -hmm. He better know how to explain himself. He better know how to debate. Better know how to make good decisions. He has to have a grasp, not only of the domestic, but of the international situation, because we are in a very hot cockpit of trouble here. 
we China as our neighbor. So, ano ano advice mo daw? Motor na magaling, right? I'm going to carry it around. Yes. Are you going to vote for somebody? You gonna do all that, or are you gonna vote on the basis of your senses? Oh, he makes me laugh. Oh, I enjoy him. He's nice. He's kind. He gave me 1,000 pesos. Schedule pa, may resibo pa. Diba? Diba? 2,500 pa nga iba. So you know what's wrong. The trouble is we know what we do not want, but you do not know what you want. So there's a lack of vision, lack of values which we have as a family, but you can't seem to have a national value system that we can continue to do so that we can get out of our run. Uh, magandang hapon po, Senator Jamin Dosa po of Veritas TV, Radio Veritas Legaspi po. 165 families po, uh, napakagandang uh, bilang, malaking bilang po ito ng mga beneficiaries and uh, uh, malaking tulong po ito. Excuse me, Sandrila, huh? I, I want to give credit or credit is due. The Red Cross acts as a unified organization internationally, and in the Philippines, it acts in a unified manner. Are you aware? I'll ask you a question again. We built 80,000 homes in Hayan, in Yolanda. The total homes that we have done, and I visit them on the course of the campaign, is 151,000 homes. I can tell you where they are. But I visited the Tipolo, where we did 4,000. Nagawa namin yun, pero wala pang social, uh, wala silang health center. So, ang Red Cross, I'm going to put up a health center there because there are 4,000 people there, they don't have access to a medicine. Hopefully my friends will help me. Wala nang magtatanong, Mr. Senator. Uh, sa inyo pong siguro, panawagan na lang sa mga bikulano, Mr. Senator. Ay, ako ang panawagan ko, salamat to sa inyo mga kaibigan ko sa media. Medyo, kung nararamdaman niya na medyo may palapilantik yung boses ko it's because nakaka frustrate na nakaka discourage na and when I speak here I can speak with cogency hopefully we can have a dialogue here which is the essence of the market when I speak in the rallies they're only giving me five three minutes guguluin ka pa as we medic medic may request kami doon tatak mo Pag tulong tayo na, may, may nagugulo talaga sa akin. Pinabayaran siguro na Duterte o tumakalabay ko. As I mean, too big. Tapos yung account, ipigilin ka. So there's no room for discussion. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to discuss with you. And answer your questions which I thought are quite present na talaga nang nagdi-discuss natin ang totoo. And nakita na yun yung sinasagot ko. Pati yung kita lima, I apologize to Laila. Huwag nyo lang nasa na, umalis sa'yo ng tanong kanina. Ba't tayo nyo ngayon na baka mamaya, iba-iba yung tulad dyan. I didn't want to ask you that, but just to be fair. Wala naman akong pakailan sa buhay ng personal na isang tao, pero sa public life dyan, dyan tayo may pakailan. So ang sinasabi ko lang sa inyo, dapat pag-aralan nyo yung pagboto, yung mga bitulano, magagaling kayo, magatalino kayo. By the way, magatalino kayo, lahat ng ninong ng anak ko, ay Bicolano. Francisca Chetrena, Ruben Balani, Padre Berna, as well as my son, my grandson, here my son, and a lot of other people were Bicolano. They are Sergas. So, I've always admired the Bicolano for his wit, for his intelligence, and it is my hope that uh, we all vote wisely. What are you saying? They are the Bicol. Now, if you're a Bicol, of course, you'll vote that way, whether I say it or not. Vote on your own because she's not a bad guy. She's fit to be president. That's what you want. And if you have people who you don't like to be president, and you know something, speak out. Sagutin nyo. Ito yung babayaan. Ito yung pagpinabayaan nyo, namimiyasa, at magiging permanente na sa utak ng tao, na walang ibubuga ang bayan natin. Naniniwala ako, at tayo ay magagaling ng mga tao. We are very moral people. And unfortunately, because of our poverty, we have lost our moral steerage. Parang tayong barko na lumahan, lumulutang-lutang na lang. Sumusunod na lang tayo sa Agos, o saan tayo buga. Sa akin, we must face the future and face it with conviction. 
and resoluteness and make sure that uh, you do it. Look at your grandchildren, look at your brother or your younger brother or sister or mother or father. Even if they are senior citizens, they will need help later on and you better have the job to make sure that you can protect them because our social services aren't that adequate, our hospitals aren't that adequate, our schools aren't that adequate, and if we don't vote right, remember it takes 30 years, party system we can do so properly. Thank you all very much. Mabuhay kayong lahat. God bless. Coronavirus ba ang hadlang sa pag-aaral ninyo? Andito na ang Southern Luzon Technological College Foundation Incorporated ay gumawa ng hakbang sa mga gustong mag-aaral.